Hi there. We are on day, I have to check, 260. 260 of our Through the Bible in One Year. Let's jump over there. And the, he was talking about future, about stuff that John talked about in Revelation. Very similar story. I'm not sure where these are going, but let's find out, okay? Ah, yeah, we're going to continue. Vision of a Glorious One. Hmm. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belshazzar. Belteshazzar. The message was true and was about a great conflict. He understood the message and had understanding of the vision. <clears throat> In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks. I didn't eat any rich food, no meat or wine entered my mouth. I didn't put any oil on my body until the three weeks were over. <clears throat> On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there was a man dressed in linen with a gold, with a belt of gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face was like brilliance of light, of lightning, and his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and feet like the gleam of polished bronze, and the sound of his words are like the sound of a multitude. <clears throat> Only I, Daniel, saw the vision. The two, the men who were with me did not see it. But a great terror fell on them, and they ran and hid. I was left alone looking at this great vision. No strength was left in me. My face grew deathly pale, and I was powerless. I had the, I, I heard the words he said, and when I heard them, I fell into a deep sleep with my face on the ground. I fell asleep on my face. Angelic conflict. Suddenly a hand touched me and raised me to my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you are a man treasured by God. Understand the words that I am saying to you. Stand on your feet, for I have now been sent to you. After after he said this to me, I stood trembling. Don't be afraid, Daniel, he said to me. From the first day that you purposed to, you proposed to understanding and to humble yourself before God, your prayers were heard. I have come because of your prayers. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. That's the archangel, Michael, right? came to help me after I had been there for been left there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to help you understand what will happen to your people in the last days, for the vision refers to those days. Okay, this is the days John spoke about. These days have not happened yet. Okay. While I was saying these while he was saying these words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and was speechless. Suddenly one with human with suddenly one with human likeness touched my lips. I opened my mouth and said to the one standing in front of me, My Lord, because because of the vision, anguish overwhelms me, and I am powerless. How can someone like me, your servant, speak with someone like you, my Lord? Now I have no strength, and there is no breath in me. Then the one with human likeness touched me again and strengthened me. He said, Don't be afraid, you who are treasured by God. Peace to you. Be very strong. <clears throat> As he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, <clears throat> Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. <clears throat> he said, Do you know why I have come to you? I, am, I must return at once to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I leave, the prince of Greece will come. No one has the courage to, su to support me against them except Michael, your prince. However, I will tell you what is recorded in the book of truth. Mm -hmm. In the first year of Darius the Mede, I stood up to strengthen and protect him. Now I will tell you the truth. Oh, yeah, that's chapter 11. <clears throat> Prophecies about Persia and Greece. Three more kings will arise in Persia, and the fourth will be far richer than the others. By the power he gains through his riches, he will stir up everyone against the kingdom of Greece. Then a warrior will arise. He will, he will rule a vast, a vast realm and do whatever he wants. But as soon as he is established, his kingdom will be broken up and divided to the four winds of heaven. But not to his descendants. It will not be the same kingdom that he ruled because his kingdom will be uprooted and will go to others besides them. Kings of the South and the North. The king of the South will grow powerful, but one of the commanders will grow more powerful and will rule a kingdom greater than his. After some years, they will form an alliance and the daughter of the king of the South will go to the king of the North to seal the agreement. She will not, re she will not retain power and his strength will not endure. She will be given up, together with her entourage, her father, and the one who supported her during those times. In the place of the king of the south, one from her family will rise up. There's a note there. From the shoot of her roots. 
will rise up. Come against, come against the army and enter the fortress of the king of the north. He will take action against them and triumph. He will, he will take even their gods captive to Egypt with their metal images and their precious articles of silver and gold. For some years he will stay away from the king of the north, who will enter the kingdom of the king of the south and then return to his own land. His sons will mobilize for war and assemble a large number of armed forces. They will advance, sweeping through like a flood, and will again wage war against this his fortress. <clears throat> Infuriated, the king of the south will march out to fight with the king of the north and will raise a large army, but they will be handed over to his enemy. When the enemy is carried off, he will become arrogant and cause tens of thousands to fall, but he will not triumph. The king of the north will again rise and raise a multitude larger than the first. After some years, he will advance with a great army and many supplies. <clears throat> In those times, many will rise up against the king of the south. Violent ones among your own people will assert themselves to fulfill a vision, but they will fail. Then the king of the north will come, build up an assault ramp, to, and capture a well-fortified city. The forces of the south will not stand. Even their select troops will not be able to resist. The king of the north who comes against him will do whatever he wants, and no one can oppose him. He will establish himself in the beautiful land with total destruction in his hand. He will resolve to come with the force of his whole kingdom and will reach an agreement with him. He will give him a daughter in marriage to destroy it, but she will not stand with him or support him. Then he will turn his attention to the, to the coasts and islands and capture many, but a commander will put an end to his taunting. Instead, he will turn his taunts against him. He will turn his attention back to the fortress of his own land, but he will stumble, fall, and be no more. Yeah. In his place, one, one will arise who will send out a tax collector for the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days he will be shattered, though not in anger or in battle. Hmm. A tax, tax collector. In his place, a despised person will arise. Royal honors will not be given to him, but he will come during a time of peace and seize the kingdom by intrigue. By intrigue. A flood of forces will be swept away before him. They will be shattered as well as, as, well as the covenant prince. After an alliance is made with him, he will act deceitfully. He will rise to power with a small nation. During a time of peace, he will come into the richest parts of the province and do what his fathers and predecessors never did. He will lavish plunder, loot, and wealth on his followers, and he will make plans against fortified cities, but only for a time. It's a long chapter. With a large army, he will stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south. The king of the south will prepare for battle with an extremely large and powerful army, but he will not succeed, because plots will be made against him. Those who eat his provisions will destroy him. His army will be swept away, and many will fall slain. The two kings whose hearts are bent on evil will speak lies at the same time, but to no avail, for still the end will come at the appointed time. The king of the north will return to his land with great wealth, but his heart will be set against the holy covenant. He will take action to return to his own land. This is a long chapter, huh? <laughs> At the appointed time he will come again to the south, but this time he will not be like it will not be like the first. Ships of Kittim will come against him, and being intimidated, he will withdraw. Then he will rage against the Holy Covenant and take action. On his return, he will favor those who who abandon the Holy Covenant. His forces will rise up and desecrate the temple fortress. They will abolish the daily sacrifice and set up an abomination of desolation. Okay, that's a that is spoke about often, okay? And you can't. You can't highlight it here. I mean, I wish you could, but you can't. Yeah. With flattery, he will corrupt those who act wickedly toward the covenant, but the people who know who know their God will be strong and take action. <clears throat> those who are wise among the people will give understanding to many, yet they will die by sword and flame and be captured and plundered for a time. When defeated, they will be helped by some, but many others will join them insincerely. Some of them some of the wives will fall so that they may be refined, purified, and cleansed until the time of the end, for it will still come at the appointed time. All right? Only God knows when. <clears throat> then the king will do whatever he wants. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god, and he will say outrageous things against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed because of what has been decreed will be accomplished. He will not show regard for the gods of his fathers, the god longed for by women or or for any other god, because he will magnify himself above all. Hmm. Sound familiar? If you've ever read Revelations, this sounds familiar. Instead, he will honor a god of a god of fortresses. 
a god his fathers did not know. With gold, silver, precious stones, and riches, he will deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god. He will greatly honor those who acknowledge him, making them rulers over many and distributing lands as a reward. Yeah. At the time of the end, the king of the south will engage him in battle, but the king of the north will storm against him with chariots, horsemen, and many ships. He will invade countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade the beautiful land, and many will fall, but these will escape from his power. Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of the, of the Ammonites. He will extend his power against the countries, and not even the land of Egypt will escape. He will get control over the hidden treasures of gold, gold and silver, and over all the riches of Egypt, the Libyans, and Cushites will also be in submission. But reports from the east and the north will terrify him, and he will go out with great fury to annihilate and completely destroy many. He will pitch his royal tents between the sea and the beautiful holy mountain. But he will meet his end with no one to help him. Wow. Okay, chapter 12. <laughs> At that time, Michael, the great prince who stands watch over your people, will rise up. There will be a time of distress such as never has recorded since the nations came into being up and until that time. Now, Jesus talked about this too, right? But at that time, all of your people who are found written in the book will escape, right? Book of life. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to eternal life and some to shame and eternal contempt. Those who, those who are wise will shine like the bright expanse of the heavens and those who lead many to... And those who led many to righteousness like, like the stars forever and ever. Wow. Now, you, now you, there's part right here. But you, Daniel, keep these words secret and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will roam about and knowledge will increase. Then I, Daniel, looked at two others who were standing there on this bank and, of the river and one on the other. <clears throat> one of them said to the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river, how long until the end of these extraordinary things? Then I heard a man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river, raise both hands toward heaven and swore by him who lives eternally that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. Okay? A time, times, and half a time. When the power of the holy people is shattered, all these things will be completed. I heard but did not understand, so he asked, Lord, what will be the outcome of these things? He said, Go on your way, Daniel, for the words are secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined, but the wicked will act wickedly. None of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. For the time, for the time, the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of the desolation is set up. Oh, that's in the, that's during the seven-year tribulation, right? There would be 1290 days. The one who waits for, the one who waits for and reaches three, 335 days will be days is blessed but as for you go on your way to the end you will rest then rise to your destiny at the end of days okay you will die and then you will rise so daniel will rise okay to his destiny at the end of days okay now i'm going to look at this verse hey that's verse seven daniel 12 7 Okay, so there you go. I'm going to look up real quick. Daniel 12, 7. Okay. <laughs> There's lots of videos and stuff on it. I'm looking for sites that I trust, you know. There's lots of weird sites out there, too. Let's see. we got Bible tools, Bible study tools. What's this one? We're looking here. Da, da, da. That doesn't help us. I'm looking for a simple explanation, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Let's go. Time plus and half of the time. And in this list, we can even look at the symbolic time span that is in part C. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking here to to them. They're thinking it means three and a half time times and half a time. But. So yeah, it's not. It's a very difficult to explain that, right? Yeah, you know, we're looking at here. See, we're looking at a time. The one time represents a period of trouble, danger, and struggle and testing. Faith is tested in many ways. All right. Two times represents double trouble, <laughs> pain and pun. The half time represents the same thing as a one time or the two times, but it puts it on a different light. <laughs> Symbolic and actual time. So, I don't think they know. <laughs> you know. Prophetic days, weeks, and months, and years are not a code from which to calculate real-time periods, but rather a symbol to stand in place of real-time periods, which are not for men to know in advance. Now, a symbolic periods, such as 355 days, indicates that this is a time or season which the Father has fixed by his own authority, and it is not for us to know. So we don't know. I'll have to I'll have to do some more research on that, you know, as far as when we know it hasn't happened yet. Huh? And we know it says Daniel will die and he will be raised at the end. Okay. So this stuff hasn't happened yet. And I mean you got the, the kings of the north, the kings of the south, and I mean certainly Persia and Egypt and, and you know, stuff they've changed names over the times, but do we fit into this picture? <laughs> I honestly don't know. Okay. I mean, there are talks in other parts of the Bible about the a land overseas and the people I will make my own that aren't from Israel. But I don't know. This is just reading through the Bible in a year. It would take you, you know, days and weeks and make months to tear this all apart. Okay. But the main um, thing of this of this particular series is to read through the Bible in a year. So we are going to read through the Bible in a year. And there will be questions, okay, as you read through it. All right, that's tomorrow. Oh, and tomorrow we're starting Ezra. Okay, so is there only 12 books in Daniel? Let's see. Yeah. That was the end of Daniel. That was a very exciting book, right? And tomorrow we're going to start Ezra. And I think there is only th th very small. Yeah. Ezra covers two days and then Haggai, Zechariah, two days. Esther. Esther's a great book. Nehemiah. And we're going to go through all these small books. And then by the end of the month, we'll be starting the New Testament. So... It'll be exciting. We'll catch up on any man missed. You want to say, got the whole Bible in a year. But until tomorrow, we'll we'll keep going and start. I already forgot which book we were starting tomorrow. Ezra. We're starting Ezra tomorrow. So there you have it. But until next time, keep reading. See ya.